This is a live channel's television event. Name is synonymous with success. Women of Roaches, Sokorocha holds a master's degree in law. As a philanthropist, he's unconditionally committed to alleviating the plight of the less privileged in the society as a basis for economic emancipation and social justice. He believes that with hard work, faith in God, honesty and objective planning, all good things are possible, and indeed, his life has been a fitting testimony to this belief. As he often says, I see justice, I beg your pardon, I see injustice, and I ask, why not justice? I see poverty, and I ask, why not affluence? I see the less privileged, and I say, why not Watchers Foundation? He established the Rochester Foundation College, a free comprehensive secondary educational institution that offers free tuition, boarding, feeding, transportation, and medical care to over 3,000 Nigerian children from less privileged families annually. Little wonder he was conferred with the traditional title of Owele Ndibo by a body led by the chairman, Southeast Forum of Traditional Rulers, Eze Ozo Okando, JP. In Northern Nigeria, he was conferred with the title Dan Jekin Sokoto by the late Sultan of Sokoto, His Eminence, Al Haji Mohammed Machido CFR. He's also the Omorodu of Yoruba land, the Okala of Ehie, the Taban Gwagwalada and the Oban Talakawa, which simply means father of the masses. A man of many parts, Governor Rochas Okorocha is a devout Christian and married with six children outside his many adopted children. He believes that he is a man reserved by God for the right moment to lead his people to the promised land. That's why he usually says he has come to rescue the Imo people. Do you remember the phrase, my people, my people? <laughs> well, you know the response, our governor, our governor. Your excellencies, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I have the singular honor and privilege to present to you father to thousands of poor Nigerian children, symbol of the new generation, standard bearer, emperor of the disabled, an accomplished administrator, our guest speaker today at the 2015 FRCN annual lecture, the executive governor of Imo State, Nigeria, Omele Rochus Anayo Okorocha, our governor, our governor. You're welcome. Thank you very much for this incumbent part of me uh, in the name of introduction. Um, when I become president, you will be the Minister of Information. <laughs> the chairman of this great occasion a long-standing senior brother and a friend, a man that believes in the unity of this country. And many Nigerians do not know that I've gone a long way with al Haji Ibrahim Kumasi, the former IGP, in issues that concerns peace in this country. The chairman, God bless you. The most controversial man during the change campaign, the turn on the flesh of now opposition party, Lai Mohammed. <laughs> I'm not surprised that you are the Minister of Information. An appointment well deserved. Thank you.
Your Royal Majesty, a, f a general that became a traditional ruler, a handsome gentleman, the issue of Nupe. I do not know whether Nupes are anywhere Nupes are in the world. You are their traditional ruler. My brother, the Commander-in-Chief of the Radio Microphone Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. <laughs> the DG, thank you for finding me worthy to deliver this lecture this day. If Radio Nigeria is to be a political party, I will be, that will be my real party. For one reason, uplifting the people and uniting the nation. This is the essence of what our change mantra stands for. The representative of the army chief and the comma show, my brother, Dr. Bello Metema Yusuf, a man that became minister at the age of 27. <laughs> Your Excellency is here too numerous mention. This is why I find it easier to say, my people, my people. <laughs> oh my governor. As you can see, I've just been drafted into be a guest lecturer. And in my usual characteristics, I'm not used to editing text. So do not expect from me a formal lecture. I'm going to give a talk. Because in the first place, I'm not qualified to be a lecturer. How can I be a lecturer when professors are here? What qualification do I have? And if I want to sound like a lecturer, they will begin to mark my thesis. But thank God also that I'm here giving a talk in the name of lecture and professors are sitting down listening to me. <laughs> what a wonderful day. This must go down in my CV as man who lectured the professors. <laughs> but on a serious note, if my views have been consulted and if Ladan had discussed with me before this invitation for this lecture, I would have chosen a topic more suitable to my talent. I would have loved to discuss of free education as an instrument for national development. I would have liked to talk about philanthropy. But here he dragged me to speak on a very controversial topic, change. And I'm not Muhammad Buhari, the president, who is the commander-in-chief of the Change Armed and Armless Forces of Federal Republic of Nigeria. So asking me now, to speak on this change is like setting a trap for me. <laughs> but let me say to you, ladies and gentlemen, I will speak and bear my heart. But in this lecture, and by the way, there will be no handout at the end of this lecture, so make sure you make your notes. I will bear my heart, and I will tell Nigerians how I feel about the entire entity called this nation because of my genuine concern for this generation and subsequent generation of Nigerians yet unborn. In other words, this is the only golden opportunity for us to get it right. And if we don't get it right now as a nation, we can as well forget it. This is why this very topic is very crucial at this moment. But let me come back to this topic. Managing change in a democracy the Nigerian situation. Rather than sounding like a lecturer, let me take a more practical approach by first of all trying to understand what, do, what does uh, Salis Ladan and his people want me to talk about? Managing change in a democracy, uh, the Nigerian example. And for those of us who understand, let me take a definition now. 
My lecture have started, by the way. Managing, for me, simply running, running a thing, business. Be it government, be it organization, be it a family. Everyone is a manager in one form or the other. But here, from the Webster New Dictionary, defines managing as uh, directing, if you like to use the word, with a certain level of skill towards ensuring the compliant in an organization. But that definition is not relevant for what I want to talk about. Because for me, managers are those who maintain the status quo and who go by the rules and regulations of an organization. So bringing a manager to a change will not be the right terminology, but rather you can bring a leader to a change. But the main, the pivot upon which this lecture will rotate is the word change. What is change? Let me also tell you, from that same dictionary, when I flipped up this morning, I said, let me know what's change all about. He gave me a very nice definition, which is doing something new in a, in a radical manner. And that quickly hit my heart to say, that's the picture Nigerians have of President Buhari before they elected him. The Buhari of change. The Buhari of queuing online. The Buhari of zero tolerance to corruption. That's what brought him in. So the word change, to most people, change means different to different people. In fact, during the last election, we were very careful about using this word change. Because change could also mean change no chance. <laughs> so while Lai Muhammad was shouting change, we have to change it then to change Abuja and leave us alone. <laughs> <laughs>